Hello, sex bomb. I hope you woke up today, you walked in the bathroom, you looked at yourself in the mirror, and you felt so grateful that you're in your banging body with that banging brain of yours. How lucky are you? People only wish that they could be you, right? Sometimes we just need that little reminder. Um, this is not the podcast to be humble. We are all for hyping ourselves up here, which is why. Hopefully this episode is going to get you out of a little bit of a funky funk if you're feeling like you're there. So I am running at the moment a, a very impromptu 10-day sales challenge. It kind of snowballed into something, as typical me, bigger than intended. Um, you know, we're kind of in launch at the moment for Business Bang. And I'm seeing online that people are like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to invest because of, of trust or whatever factor. So I'm like, okay, how can I kind of like prove myself isn't the right word, but have people experience my mentorship and get them to see results to act as a taste for what is to come in the program. And I was going to put together like a little group on Instagram where um, I could just put stuff in there. And I ended up having like 40 plus people be like, I want this. And I'm like, logistically, this is just going to be a nightmare for everyone's DMs blowing up. So I ended up creating a channel. I think there's like 100, 112 people in there, this impromptu sales challenge. <laughs> so if you are listening to this in the future, there is a chance that this is for sale. I'm going to sell it because it's just so, so good. And um, in that sales challenge, there's a poll when you enter. And it's like, you know, when we when we think about, actually, what did I say? So the question that I asked everyone was, what would you say your biggest block is right now from getting you from point A, so where you are, to point B, where you desire to be? And we had like an overwhelming number of people say that they feel stuck with what they're doing and they don't know how to go bigger. And I wanted to record a podcast on this because I really feel that there are kind of two main things happening here. Now, it could be that both are happening for you or it could be that you've got one happening. Now, one is it, it feels more like, like an emotional and a mindset thing. Like, oh, I'm 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 struggling to grow bigger. I don't I don't know what this looks like. I I don't know how we can grow bigger than what's happening now. And then the other is a strategy issue. Okay. And we're gonna cover both of those right now. So when we feel stuck, this is usually something that kind of like creeps up on us where it's not something that you're just going to wake up one day, you've been super happy, everything's amazing, it's like sunshine, lollipops and rainbows, and you wake up and you're like, I'm stuck. It's something that it will kind of be showing up in little ways that potentially you are avoiding, or you do things where you kind of put up with it because you have your afternoon wine, or you go for a coffee, or you have some sugar, or as Brooke Castillo says, you buffer, so you don't actually you know, experience the emotion around the thing. And then all of a sudden, it just feels like it compounds so much that you're like, this is a lot. It's kind of like, you know, when you're dating someone and it's not going well, but you th think it's going fine. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so done. And it's like everything kind of comes to the surface of all the ways that you've gotten here and stuff that at the time it didn't really feel like a thing. But now in the context of everything happening together, it, it feels like a lot. And I think this can happen a lot in business because you know, and I've recorded episodes on this where we have low standards with things. So we end up working with clients and doing projects or running our business in a way where it, it feels really below our standard. And then that is now manifesting in us feeling stuck because we know deep down that we're not kind of building the business that we want. We're building a business that we think that we should be doing. And we feel stuck because we know that it's not really authentic for us. And there is a reluctance to move forward, which I think is is totally normal. So this is a really good point to kind of like stop and almost like self-assess. Um, I do have a really wonderful little pack that's 35 Australian dollars that would be perfect for you called Who Are You Becoming, where we really audit everything. We, we vision or we dream up stuff in our business. We look for um, you know, people that inspire us, we add that into our business plan. And this can really be done at any time. So if you have that, don't feel that this necessarily needs to be like a start of the year thing. One of the best barometers in business and in life is to just check in with yourself and know that emotion is just going to give us so much. 
that if we feel a bit eh by something, that that is just so awesome. So really, really pay attention to that. And that as we're in this growth phase, especially if we're growing really quickly, it's really common that we're here every month. And it's not that you're doing business wrong. It's that you are growing so quickly that we are continually shedding old layers of ourselves where past us would, would really let things kind of just be. So, you know, this can happen where you feel like, let's just say that you're a service provider, you work for clients and you feel all of a sudden like there's just been all of this scope creep and now like your clients aren't treating you potentially the best because in the start you let them get away with things where you're like, oh, look, this is just a once off thing. And now you've been really hired for high level strategy, but all of a sudden you're doing VA shit. Okay. You're doing stuff that really feels below your pay grade or you're continually on call for clients. So things like that can happen where in our brain, we're like, well, I don't want to move forward because when we move forward, it means that I'm going to have more of this. So often what can happen in business, it's like when we build a business based on what we know, we end up with more of what we know, (laughs) which is why, you know, like working with someone to kind of like shake you out of that is going to be incredible. But this is where you can really design your business thinking forward. And this is one of my favorite things to do where for the moment we just remove logic and we just, we, we dream of what, how nice would it be to be this? What would it be like to be this? So this is something that I do a lot with my friends where we kind of go into these like little delusional rampages where I'm like, I want to be like a, a business like a public figure, like a business celebrity almost. Um, I want to be on the cover of Elle magazine. My friend was like, for what? And I'm like, for just being me. And she's like, but for what? I'm like, but me. Like, they're just, let's just leave logic aside for a second. This is what I want. This is all the stuff that I want. And when you focus on that, that is going to be really telling for how you can kind of conduct your business. Because what we don't want to bring when we're doing a business plan is like logic into things. And I know that you might be like, this makes no sense. The problem is when we bring logic into things, is it logic or is it just the familiarity of how we've built our business, which you need to then consider if you don't like your business, why are you bringing in logic? Because you're basically going to be bringing in like what you've known. So it would be like, for an example, you know, if this was a dating example, you could be like all men are pigs because you've dated people that weren't in, like that weren't that great for you. You don't want to then to kind of like drag that belief forward. You can then just choose in that moment. There are incredible people out there. There are incredible guys out there. There's going to be an amazing man for me, okay? You can start to do things like that. And business is absolutely the same. So what would be really good for you is to just like think about how am I stuck? You know, you could like just, if you're a journal person, you could journal on this. You could be like, how am I stuck? What is, what is old me? What in my business is old me? Where are my standards low in my business? And you can just start to like ask yourself these questions and see where you're hitting up against something. You can pay attention to the emotion within your business and how you kind of go and do things and ask yourself like where you're playing small and if you're playing small. So yesterday at work, I had this really amazing article idea. Um, and I'm like, this is such a good idea. Now I really feel that I'm so out of practice writing. And, uh, I used to be like a a freelance features writer. So I'd write health-based articles and then it, it moved into dating articles. Um, and that's kind of been my journey there, but I haven't written in it like forever, but I had this article idea. I'm like, well, okay, cool. Well, I could write about this or I could actually pitch it to a magazine. So I pitched it to Vogue business. Like, (laughs) and it's stuff where you know, I want to make sure that I'm not affirming, like just say I was stuck, that I'm not kind of affirming my stuckness by continually making moves that old me would have made. Old me would have probably just put something up on a carousel on Instagram and then been like, why is no one discovering my work? Okay, bitch, what are you doing then to be discovered? Like if you're just doing the same stuff that you were a year ago, I'm not surprised that you feel stuck because it's like, where are you evolving? How are you committed to your evolution? Where's that showing up? Are you still doing the same things that you were even at the start of the year? Because if you are, I'm not surprised that you you feel stuck, okay? Your actions show that you are stuck because you're just in this pattern of sameness. 
So I just emailed Vogue Business and was like, he, like here, let me know how I can submit this article. <laughs> and it was this short, it was this short, bold email. And it's like, great, if they don't write back to me, I'll go and I'll go and pitch to this next magazine. I went into the DMs of a, another magazine to just suggest something. So, you know, we want to make sure that our actions are not affirming the stuckness. So you can even think right now about if we really know where we want to go, and deep down you do, it may be something that you are a bit unconscious of because it could be coming up when, say, you open Instagram or you hear a friend talk and you have like this little pang of jealousy where you're like, oh, I want that. Oh, oh, that would be nice. Little things like that are going to give you clues as to what you love and what you are really desiring. Ask yourself, what decisions can you make? What can you kind of do and just put in motion right now? And don't put too much thought into it. So when I had this idea and I was like, I want to write this thing, you know what I did? I just quit quickly wrote an email and this all happened within like 10 minutes. I didn't put too much thought into it. I was like, just set this in motion. So what can you do to put something in motion today that feels, that feels like bold? And what will probably happen is you'll realize that you're actually doing a lot in your business on autopilot where you're like, oh, you know, let me show up. Let me clean my inbox. I've got to write a post. I've got to record a podcast. I've got to send an email check my DMs, put up stories, and you'll kind of just be going through this loop of sameness. When you do something that is really growth-oriented, it will fucking just bring you into the current moment. There is nothing like the mindfulness that comes from you pushing up against that growth zone and actually doing something that requires so much of you. You will be aware of everything. You will be heightened and really ask yourself, what would it look like for me to kind of do something like that in my business every single day? I didn't expect you to stay in that energy for a whole day because you'd probably be wiped out and need a nap. But, you know, what can you do? Like if you are feeling super bold, and you're like, I want to stay here for an hour or two hours. Great. What are you doing? Um, I'm going to pitch to someone huge today about something. I'm going to do that this afternoon. And because I'm like, I don't want to feel stuck still wishing that I was doing a collaboration with this person. I've been talking about this for a year. Why? You know, so it's like when I feel stuck, what are my actions doing that are kind of affirming the stuckness? I think sometimes we're waiting. It's like this whole, let me wait to be chosen, where so much in business is choosing yourself and putting yourself forward. So that's the first thing that I'm going to say say around being stuck and the mindset piece. And now we're going to talk about the strategy and what to actually do when you are feeling stuck. Now, I have a feeling when we when we talk about stuckness, like if we're thinking about our business, this is probably coming up where you feel like that your income is stuck at a level or worse, you're stuck at a level and then you start to go backwards, which is so fun, isn't it? But the cool thing is this is actually usually quite easy to fix. How fun is that? So when we're actually feeling stuck within our business, there is probably two things that are happening. Are you ready? Write this down. You have a traffic problem and you have a sales problem. That's it. It is those two things, traffic and sales. Now, you might be like, no, my audience is growing. Okay. However, is your audience growing at the rate that it needs to for you to sustain the growth that you want? What I mean by this is let's pretend for a minute that you sell online courses and you launched a course with an audience of 2,000 followers on Instagram, and 200 people on your mailing list. Let's hope I remember this, Matt's, okay? You had really good results. You sold heaps. Now, let's pretend that your audience has now grown to 2,500 followers and you've got 250 people on your Instagram. You're not going to get that same launch result. You just won't because you think about it. When we look at the conversion rates for that, it's not like we have grown enough to then get the same conversion rates we would probably have to double. And the reason you might be like, well, why would I have to double? Because there's going to be people that were just 
team that couldn't purchase in the first round, it's because you have new eyeballs and you need to remember that sometimes you, the people that purchased in the first round have been nurtured for you for how long? New eyeballs can sometimes take longer to convert. So if you are continually um, relying in your business on p- selling to new people, okay? So an example for this would be for my business. I've got give good email. That's something that people buy once. It's not an offer that people can buy again and again. So look at your business on what offers you're selling that people buy once versus offers that people buy again and again. Business bank is something that they can buy again and again. Give good email is something they buy once. All of my self-paced downloads, they buy once. So you can see here how unless I am committed to growing my audience and continually getting in front of new eyeballs and doing traffic activities, this is where I can feel like I'm growing because my Instagram account is going up, my mailing list is growing up, but the results are not materializing and it's because I'm not actually growing as fast as I need to to keep up with the results in my business. So Something that we all need to do is have a plan to get in front of new eyeballs every single day and to sell every single day. Now, these are two questions that I ask my clients when I work with them. You know, we look at traffic and lead gen and eyeballs, and then we look at sales. Now, when I say, what is your plan to get in front of new people every single day? I don't expect you to work every single day. But we want to be conscious that if we want our business to work for us, we need our business to work for us. And if you can't get in front of new people every single day, if you need to be physically working for that, you can see how we've got a problem. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, everything in your business stops. We want it to be moving forward despite what is happening for you. So this is where a lot of the time I will have clients that have very good businesses. They'll have very good offers. The sales page is amazing. And they... They, they, they'll, they just don't have enough people. <laughs> they just do not have enough people. Um, I will say, if you haven't already, I've created an awesome quiz called How Hot Is Your Business? If you actually go through and answer um, 20 questions, there's actually two, ca- there's two categories that this relates to um, around like sales and then the traffic and eyeballs. And I will actually, you get a score and then there's a masterclass that you can watch with a whole worksheet where I help you actually fill this in to create this for your business. It is basically the next best thing to working with me if if you're like, look, I'm not financially in a point where I can pay you yet. Or you're like, I just want to kind of work with you to see your approach before I actually give you money, which I completely understand. Go and do this, okay? This is something that we cover in the worksheet. You can go and just commit some time, do it today. Um, please let me know how you found it. Of course, I would love to know. But we need to make sure that we are getting in front of new people continually. So this happened to me for a couple of launches where I just assumed with give good email, I'm like, yeah, we're growing. But when I actually really looked at the data, and this is why tracking is amazing for you to actually track your audience, track your list growth. We've had enough kind of promotions for it that I can easily work out how well a launch is going to do. Now, I want to talk to you about a personal experience where this is coming up to me and how I'm kind of tackling this in my strategy. So Business Bang was launching this year. Now, it had to get pushed back a little bit. I will be honest, I started the year actually feeling a little bit exhausted. Last year was just, it was so huge between basically living out of a suitcase for the whole year. Um, it, it, it was It was a lot. So I started the year just feeling a bit like I just need to take my time. And then we started to launch Business Bang, and it was quieter than I would have liked. And I was like, have I actually grown my audience enough? Do I have have enough people around me that are interested and keen for this offer to be viable? And the answer is not really. Like for me to get the result that I wanted, I just had not grown my audience as much as I should have. I had an eyeballs problem. The offer was good. Uh, it was it was purely an eyeballs problem. It was also probably time because I was having eyeballs come in front of me that were amazing clients. But I'm like, I don't think that we have had enough time for you to develop the trust and then drop a couple thousand dollars on this offer. So there was also that. So when we started this launch, 
launch, when I say we, I mean like me and my business. <laughs> um, when, you know, we'd started this launch, I felt stuck. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm talking you know, a brick wall with things. I don't even know if this is landing. This feels really quiet. Stuff isn't moving forward. And I felt stuck. Now, I did two things. The first thing is I really looked at what we covered in the first part of this podcast, which is like the emotional side of things. So where am I actually feeling stuck emotionally in my business? And one of the things was I felt like that I wasn't showing up completely authentically because I'm a very fiery person and there was just stuff that I was not saying. In a way, I was worried about fallout. I was worried about upsetting people. Um, you know, I'm quite direct, but sometimes there's a part of me that's like, I don't want to upset people and I don't want them to think that I'm being this bro where I'm agitating them to get this result, right? But there's all these dumb fuck things that I'm seeing at the moment. I'm seeing people with huge accounts that are just giving really negligent advice. I'm seeing people that you know, if you look at their launches, they've changed their message every time and they're kind of doing these one extremes to the other. And I was getting annoyed because I'm like, I've been so consistent. You can look back through everything I've done. I've, I've given you consistent advice. Like, sure, it's evolved, but you actually can see this common thread of everything that I've ever told you. And I've never said one extreme and then we've moved to the other. And I was really feeling like I was holding myself back. And I'm like, you just have to show up and you have to speak and you have to say what's on your mind. And if people leave, they can fuck off. And that is an intentional shift that I had made that I realized that in a way I was censoring myself and I was holding myself back because I was worried that I was going to upset people. But I'm like, you're actually disadvantaging people by not being yourself because they're going to go and work with these wankers that don't know what they're doing because they have the audacity to show up in a particular way. So I'm like, you're just going to have to get over this and just post what you want. And I really struggled at the start of the year to show up on social media because I'm like, oh, I don't know what to say. And it's like, bitch, you do know what to say. You're just not saying it. And I'm going to give you the same advice. Like, what are you actually saying that you know that you should say that you are not saying? Okay. And I started to show up with this different fire and this different energy, really saying all the stuff that I was having in behind the scenes conversations, I was having with people that I was not actually putting out there. So that was one thing. The second thing was, you know, when I realized, okay, sweet, we may have a bit of an eyeballs problem. We may have a sales problem. And there could be something where do people trust me enough to invest in this program that I know is amazing? So I had put together this little group that again had evolved into something bigger which I think I've called it Hot Babes for Hot Business. And it's now evolved into a 10-day sales challenge where we look at creating a goal and we look at, you know, the process and how important this is. So, you know, if we want to say in the next 10 days, go and make $10,000, we look about the process of that. I've mapped out everything and then the people will just do these videos and then there's just like some stuff that they do each day. I looked yesterday, again, there's 112 people in here. My first video at the time had 66 people view it. And that blew my mind because if you have ever run any live events, you know that getting people along to a live event can sometimes be like pulling teeth. That if you just have, if you have 50% of people that are either there live or watching the replay, that you are a unicorn rock star and that you have to be celebrated. You need a national day in your honor. So the fact that people were watching this and consuming this. I'm like, this is amazing. Just, just stay up and stay the course. So I wanted to do this for two reasons. One, I wanted to showcase my skills and be like, hey, I'm the shit. I know exactly what I'm doing. I understand business. I can help you move through this. But I was also doing this because I felt stuck. And I'm like, nothing is materializing how it should. And rather than me sitting in the energy and going through the launch and maybe pulling back and then getting into the drama and then being like, oh, maybe I'm not cut out for business. Maybe it's the market. I was like, no, don't. Do not sit in the drama of this, which is actually funny enough, one of the business bank guiding principles, you know, drama free. We leave it for the daytime soaps. And I looked for ways for me to get unstuck and to bring in new energy in my business. 
So if you are in that plateau, the first, the, the couple things that you can look at straight away are eyeballs and sales. And when you look at that, you can be like, what, wh- how many like new eyeballs am I getting in front of every month? Am I actually growing? And this for you could be a traffic problem. You can ask yourself, am I selling? This could be a sales problem. Now, when this is going to differ so much depending on the kind of business you've got. If you are someone that sells one-off products, so for example, give good email, it could be that you're selling vacuums where people just buy one. Um, You know, this is where we have to be continually in pursuit of new people. We need to ensure that we have a process that that we show up where we get new eyeballs continually. This is sometimes why people will invest in paid media because it is just easy for them to outsource that, okay? Um, And I'm not saying that you you should do that, but this is obviously why some people are so committed to their, their meta ads and their Instagram ads because they know that they need new eyeballs. Now, where I'm going to present something for you a bit differently is There is a chance that you have a business where when you get a customer, that you actually can keep that customer. This came up in a masterclass that I taught for the wonderful Elise at Bossy Copy. She has this mentorship program and I went in and talked business to her newbie copywriters. And I said to them that they were really lucky that they had a service that they could keep their clients. And what I meant by that is the client could start with one project and then they could sell them another project or they could sell them a retainer. And I mentioned the cost of lead generation and how expensive it is. It is expensive in dollars if you're paying or it's expensive in time and it's expensive in effort. So if you have a business where you can keep your clients, you can sell them something else, which is why I'm a huge fan of having an ecosystem of offers, which is what I've really tried to do in Professional Babe, is if people like me, great, here are all the ways that you can pay me, let's keep working together. That's amazing for the customer, but it's also a very strategic business decision because I understand how costly lead generation is. It's like when I had my Pilates studio, I wasn't trying to build my wealth selling new client packages. I was so focused on getting a client and then as soon as they'd done their new client package that they went into our 10-week Pilates challenge. I didn't want to build my business as well by continually having to get in front of new people. I wanted people to be so happy with their service and for this to make so much sense that it for them didn't really take a lot of thought for them to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go and buy this next. This feels like a really good deal. So what you can look at in your business is, you know, how can you keep a customer? You can look at depending on if you use Stripe, your customer lifetime value, Um, you can even like log into Stripe and see, you know, how much people have spent. And this could potentially be for you to get unstuck is asking yourself, what would it look like for you to keep, keep your customers and clients, sell to them again. Maybe we need to focus on your customer lifetime value. Maybe that's why you're stuck because you are continually in this cycle of getting new people when really your business model is set up where it shouldn't be about continually getting new people but it's also about keeping your customers really, really happy and ensuring that we have processes where they stay customers and that we have offers where they stay customers, okay? So that's another thing for you to look at. And this is going to be so business model dependent. I don't believe that there is a business model that suits everyone, okay? You're not going to have a way of doing business that suits e-com, that suits service-based, that suits people targeting this segment or this segment or this segment. This is where we have to do something that really, really works for us. And where things may have not been working for you is if you have looked at someone else's success online, you've tried to translate that into your business and you're like, shit, I don't like this. And I see this a lot where people feel like that, you know, the simple solution is they're just going to sell courses or they're going to sell once-off products. And what I would say to that is you have no idea the cost of the lead generation for that business. I get that they could be making $100,000 a month, but if their Facebook ads are everywhere, how much are they spending? How much are they spending to make that $100,000? And that's a question you really need to sit with and consider. (laughs) So hopefully from this episode, you've got some things to think about, about if you are feeling stuck where it's actually coming from. And hopefully I have given you some tangible strategy for you to actually move forward in your business. 
Now, I feel like it would be silly for me to go through this whole episode and to not tell you about Business Bang. I've mentioned it a couple of times, but this is my program and mentorship where we really cover two things. We cover the business side of business. I'll teach you how to do business and have a good business. And we cover entrepreneurship and what what that means. I believe that entrepreneurship is an action. It is not a label in our Instagram bio. It is a way of being. It's a way of thinking. It's a complete way of doing our business. Now, Business Bang is not for new business owners. It's not for people that have just started. It is for established hotties. So you are already out there. You're selling your stuff. You have money coming into your business. And this is where we get to make things better. I want you to actually be like, holy shit, we have grown so much. Or I've seen a direct ROI of this. And I want to really change the way that your brain works when it comes to business. So you actually have gone from this, oh, I'm just a sole trader or, oh, it's just my little business to I could have a big fuck off company because I literally have the makings now of a company founder brain where I can make this as big as I want or I can do whatever I want. Okay. So check it out. I will link it below. Um, I love this. I've loved this so much. I love this. I love you. What do I love you more than? I'm having this real man attraction thing at the moment. I went to the supermarket the other week and this guy stopped and he like looked me up and down and he was like, I was like, wow, that was just so obvious. And then he liked me on Hinge and was like, are you the chick at Coles? And I was like, yeah, you were the guy that checked me out when I was buying my hormone free chicken. And then last night I went out and the bartender was so cute. He was a bit young, but he was gorgeous. And he kept coming up. We like the only table I think was water and he was just super attentive. I was there with a friend. And when we went to leave, um, he came up to my friend on the street and was like, is your friend single? So I don't know what kind of like pheromones I'm putting out there at the moment, but I'm loving this. If this could continue, that would be so wonderful. So I love you more than that. Um, I had this morning a dark, li- dark, oh my gosh, a dark chocolate cherry hot cross bun because I just couldn't resist uh, with some like – thick sliced salted butter. It was just amazing. 10 out of 10 experience. Um, So I love you more than that. I love you more than the coffee that I'm about to have. And I just love you more than the possibilities of everything. It feels just good energy. I know, I know for some of you, you are feeling a bit stuck and I know that it's just like, oh, this just, this feels a lot. Always remember that the brave ones are in the arena. And that, you know, not everyone is brave enough to have a business or do what you do. So you already have a leg up on everyone else. And how exciting is that? So I love you more than that. Anyway, hot stuff. Have the best fucking day. Go make some money. Move through those blocks. You're too sexy to be stuck. So just remember that.